Well, 18 years ago, American teenager Natalie Holloway disappeared in Aruba. Today, Joran Vandersloot, the prime suspect in her disappearance, is expected to face charges related to the case in Alabama. Yeah, Greta Van Susteren, host of The Record, is one of the foremost experts in this case, joins us now live from Birmingham with more. Greta, tell us what's going on. Well, he has just touched down, of course, at the airport. We've been tracking it, Beth and I have. I, look, I've worked with Beth Holloway on this for 18 years. I promised her in 2005 I'd stay with it till the end. Frankly, Beth and I have sort of laughed that we thought it'd be a couple days. It's turned into 18 years. And so we have been tracking this and we're, you know, for, since the time the FBI took off, the FBI probably didn't know that we could all track their plane. But we've been tracking since the moment they took off to the moment they touched down. And look, um, you know, that night, May 30th, 2005, Iran gave Natalie a tour of his hometown, Aruba, the country. Well, today he gets to see her hometown, Birmingham, Alabama, and tomorrow he'll face a judge. Sloot has never been charged with Holloway's murder. What are these new charges he'll be facing? It's extortion and wire fraud relating to 2010 when he tried to extort money out of the mother of, of, of Natalie Holloway. You know, what's interesting is this, is that he murdered Stephanie Flores, age 21, met her in a casino like he met uh, uh, Natalie at a casino, murdered her on May 10th, uh, May, May 30th of 2010, five years to the day he was last seen with, with Natalie Holloway. So um, what happened was he tried to extort money from the mother of Natalie Holloway, and those two counts, wire fraud and extortion, carry a maximum penalty of 40 years. He only got 28 years, which was the maximum for killing Stephanie Flores in Peru. So if he's convicted here of those two felony counts, he could actually get more time than for beating to death uh, Stephanie Flores in that hotel room in, in Lima, Peru. Have you talked to Beth Holloway lately? Have you, um, uh, the, the mother... <laughs> Uh, can I what's just it like? can I talk to her she... probably 15 times today, yeah. probably 15 times today, probably 15 times yesterday, probably 10 times a day average for the last three years or more. So, yeah, I can say I talk to her. I talk to her all the time. And how is she doing? Give us a feel, because this is any parent's nightmare, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, and, and so how, what is it like now 18 years later? Well, you know, I, I don't want to steal her thunder in terms of, I mean, not her thunder, but I, I don't want to speak for her. But I will tell you this. She is like every mother who has lost a child, a child's murder. You know, she could pick up a car off a child to, to help her daughter. She has never given up. She has persevered against the most unthinkable things. Look, Beth and I tried to get so many people in our federal government to help us for the last couple of years. And be, you'd be shocked at how many people didn't help us. And it was only until recently that we got help from two people who were registered agents for Peru and the president of Peru who, who signed that extradition order and now the uh, incredible, incredible field agents who are on that plane uh, going to Aruba and coming here today. Look, I'm, I'm a big fan of the federal, of the field agents in the FBI who did this. It is a magnificent job, but there, you know, a lot of people in our federal government um, really did let, let this family down. And the only reason I raised that is because is that there's so many American families who, who suffer similarly needing help from their government. And, you know, it's a one thing to say yes, it's another thing to do. Uh, Greta, it has been 18 years since Natalie disappeared. Her body has never been found. Um, do you think that we will ever really know what happened to her in Aruba? 100 percent, because I will tell you something. Beth and I literally have been working on this for 18 years. We, did we, didn't, we didn't disclose everything that we've discovered for one simple reason, is because we wanted to get Iran to U.S. soil because we didn't want the people who know so much about this and who, are, who have lived a very dirty life as a result of this and were very dirty back in 2005 to interfere with, the, with justice and getting Iran here because some people are still in power and could still do things. So do I think so? I think you will because I think you'll hear it from Beth and from me and I think you'll hear it with, you'll see it with your, you'll see the evidence. You won't have to listen to us. We'll show you some things. But first get your on here. First give him a fair trial. Get him a good lawyer. Give him a fair jury. Let the jury hear the evidence. Let the jury consider and let the judge do whatever the judge does it. And then you will see so much more. But it was so important because, yeah. look, um, you know, we were so worried that people look there is I ha if you read my Twitter account, you'll see that I got I got a tweet today from some a source in, in Peru who said that the Dutch tried to interfere with Iran signing papers to come here to the wow. United States because he's a Dutch national. He's right. not a proven national. But read my Twitter file. You know, so 
Um, look, uh, there's there's a lot more to this story and a lot more to come. But but the thing okay. is, let's get him a fair trial. Let's give him a good lawyer. You, and he's right behind me in the federal court. You're talking okay. about this tonight. Uh, well, I'm a guest with uh, John Huddy, my old colleague from Fox News, because I've been covering this case since Fox News. John Huddy is my guest host tonight, and he's uh, invited me on as a guest, so yes. Okay, perfect. Greta Van Susteren, thank you so much. We will see you tonight. Thank you.